there's no reason to use a cheap disposable razor or pay a ridiculously high price for gimmicks. Make the smarter choice and join Dollar Shave Club like my boy Tim did. Have you seen him lately? No more neckbeard. It's beautiful. Get a close shave every time and you can't beat the convenience or the price. If you haven't tried Dollar Shave Club yet, you're missing out. It's an amazing shave at an affordable price. There's no smarter choice on the market. And right now, they're giving away a one-month trial of any of their razors for $1 with free shipping. And after that, it's just a few bucks a month. There's no long-term commitment, no hidden fees, and you cancel whenever you want. Get your dollar trial at dollarshaveclub.com slash greggy. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash greggy. What's up, guys? Welcome to a very special episode of the Game Over Greggy Show. Look who's here. We got Andy Cortez, everybody. <laughs> What's up? What's going on, guys? How yes, are hello. we? Hello. San Francisco, it's great over here. And Bernie Burns, creator, creative director of Rooster Teeth? Is Chief that... creative officer, how dare oh, you demote okay. me? Oh, okay. Some chump creative yeah. director You're position. You're fucked up. Yeah. That's, big, oh, you were creative director, big right? Big fan of your previous work, by the way. Oh, yeah. thanks. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. So this is obviously a very different episode of the Game Over Greggy Show. Just to get you up to speed, Greg Miller is off getting married. That's a big deal. Yeah. I can now say that publicly. People can know about that. So that's, congrats to them. Hey. I had that bomb dropped on me right before this. Yeah. That's surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to love. You know? Shout out to love. That's what I've been saying for years. Yeah, sure. And then Nick Scarpino, a similar story, broke himself um, in the most classic Nick fashion, getting out of his car, pulled a muscle. He was literally, as my brother described it, swimming on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> the metaphor runs deep yeah, between man. marriage and crippling yourself with a back injury. But it's like, you know you know it was bad that he knew Bernie was coming and he still was like, I need to Uber. His car is still here. His car, I, his car might be here for the next week and a half. Yeah, we'll see. Nick, you can just say you don't want to see me. You don't have to hurt yourself next time. Yeah, so. Mm, it, that's I, felt, Nick. I felt really worried about it. I, I was telling Tim on the way over here. Well, one time my dad dislocated his knee and I was just a child. And in many ways, I still am a child, so I felt like Nick was my dad in the situation. Really? And I felt so scared and, like, worried, and what do I do in this situation? I was like, Nick, what do I do? And, and there he was in the hallway on all fours, and he was just going, I'm good, man. Just give me a sec. Just give me a sec. And, and I kind of forgot he was there, and I started editing more, and then I turned around two minutes later, and he was still there. Yeah. And then he crawled backwards he crawled into backwards his office. backwards on all fours. And so I had the other end of that where I'm sitting at my desk, and I just see Nick ass first crawling back into the room <laughs> and I looked at it and I was like oh, no. Tim just don't even talk to him don't even talk <laughs> yeah. all the thoughts going through my head I was like give him a space where's the camera let him let him do what he needs to do whatever but then the yeah. second thought I had was should I text Kevin God, right now and tell him do not joke to Nick yeah this is not the time this is going to end poorly if you make any old jokes to Nick yeah, and don't I'm make proud of you, Kev. You read the room for the first time ever in oh, your life. Stop. Really? Self awareness. Oh, yeah. You pick it up on social cues. Yeah. Although I have yeah, to say no. though, Andy, if anybody would be happy that you have daddy issues that you're displacing on them, it would be Nick Scarpino. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He would be happy about that. Yeah. Sounds yeah. Good. Daddy anything, he's just he's just into it. <laughs> That's but his anyways, demo. Uh he wished he could have been here, so does Greg, but they're off celebrating other things. And Nick, I hope is okay somewhere. I have no idea. But it was weird because I'm looking at him and I'm like I, I think do? the best thing to do is not say anything. Just sure. let him do him, you know, and he was just writhing in pain. I asked if horrible. he wanted help up, and he said, I feel way less in pain in this position than I do <laughs> sitting down or standing up. Yeah, yeah. so, man. When someone's really hurt, like when somebody gets hit, hurt when you're shooting something, too, like on set, and there's like an action that happens, somebody gets hurt, everyone just gets super quiet and just let them walk it off, yeah. man. That's the best solution. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, he, he, he tried to walk it off, but he kind of... <laughs> Crawled it did off. Did he crawl to the Uber? Did, I mean, did it, for anybody that's played uh, Metal Gear Solid Four, there's the microwave scene. <laughs> yeah. Oh it yeah. It was kind of like that. holy shit. <laughs> we should have put like a cardboard box on it. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just you know, old man snake kinda, mode. Kind of go through. So here's the deal. I've never done this whole Game Over Greggy show hosting spiel because Greg's been on the majority of the episodes of this Gosh, show. Gosh. Yeah. He's uh, missed a couple, and whenever he missed it, Colin did it. But now that Colin gone, Colin's gone. It's gonna have to be me. Dude, I, I'm dying to hear you try it. Let, let's go. Uh, if you didn't know, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the game of game over Greggy show. Each and every week, four, sometimes five, sometimes three, best friends gather around this table, each bringing a topic of discussion for your amusement. Uh, if you want to get it early, you can go to Patreon.com/slash/kind of funny to get a lot of perks and goodies. And 
one dollar gets I don't wait. I don't know one dollar gets exclusive stuff. And, you made uh, it further than I would have. And then you can go to youtubecom slash funny where it's broken up topic by topic, day by day. Until you get the Until final the version. the final version as an MP3 and YouTube oh, video like, for your amusement. I don't know how many times he says for your amusement, but he says it a couple times. Uh, the nerdy news you need to know about. Nope, that's the other Different show. Different show. Yeah, okay. until then have a conversational day. No, that's something else. I'm uh, just going to say I think you should replace a standard one with that. That yeah. was perfect. Something good. I nailed feel like it. I nailed it. Verbatim. So when marketing messages are concise. <laughs> so Bernie, we, we have you, so we're like, we got to do a show. We got to just not miss this opportunity. I, my voice is a little hoarse. I think it's okay to say this because I was recording lines for Kind of Funny Animated. For the finale. For the finale. Uh, for the two-part epic finale. Oh, no spo- no uh, spoilers, but I'm in the finale. Yes, and oh, he, he's been so the main villain of the series. Not dead yet. Thus far. I think villain's taking it a bit far. I That's think I'm true. misunderstood. That's no, yeah. I just love... No, I, I think he's a villain. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes love is misunderstood, sure. you know? No, I totally Usually get you, bro. not with, like, kids. I listen, I, listen, <laughs> I just want to say I'm very upset that Greg was not here and he's getting married on the day I'm recording this character. I use that for motivation. Yeah. Just uh, yeah, yeah, raw, yeah. Just, internal jealousy. Exactly. Sure. My character. Sure no, I totally get it and I love it. But, uh, yeah, so you're, you're here. You just recorded that. Um, you've, you probably have more lines in the animated series than... Most of us do. <laughs> I figured that out when I got the last script. It yeah. was I was like, oh, I need to jump in the booth in Austin, where I'm from, and record these lines. And I got through like four pages. And I was like, oh, there's way more here yeah. than this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nick's, Nick's, uh, Nick writes it, and he just like, whenever he gets access to like actual talented people, he's just like, I'm going to just push Bernie as far as I think he'll go. So your character is just an actual, he's like, what if I made him like, a pedophile clown. You think he'd be cool with that? I'm like, I, well, we could see. Yeah. And there you go. He is. is that a pro tip, you can say whatever you want to as long as you never sign a release form. So, so, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we can all show no, up and I'll just be like, go, nah, I'm not happy with this. Take did it you off the go air. full method acting for this? What, did I wear clown makeup or did I bang kids? Either. Which one? No, neither. <laughs> neither neither <laughs> column A nor That's column B. Right. Well, that is an okay segue to our first topic of the day, which is vlogging. That's a no, that's a solid segue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very solid. So I, I want to talk about vlogging because you you've started vlogging recently. Relatively, yeah. Yeah, and you've been doing this this thing. I remember your, your first blog vlogs were around kind of funny life two era, so about a year ago. Yeah, from now, but those are like early. Now they've evolved a little bit. Yeah, so I did I did this event. Uh, 83, I guess the last year at this point, so we're coming up on a year of it, uh, where they were debuting Battlefield, and they had a 64-player tournament with influencers and celebrities. And I'm really glad that they How make a distinction. How could that go wrong? Yeah. I'm glad they make the distinction, though. Like, I like where that influencer term has ended up, because web celebrity is like, everyone's don't call me a celebrity. I can't. Oh, yeah, weird. it's just, no. We realize we're not celebrities, you know? But people like the celebrities in this tournament are so I ended up stationed right next to Wiz Khalifa and Snoop Dogg was right across from me. What a team. That was... What was their KD ratio? Ah, uh, Dude, it was miserable. <laughs> Wiz Khalifa got in the Zeppelin at one point, and he was super happy the entire time. <laughs> he was like that dude who's in the door in Full Metal Jacket going, get some, get some. But uh, He was flying high in two different ways. Let me tell you, when they walked in... Before we even saw them, you could smell them coming. And they, <laughs> That's like coming. <laughs> they didn't give a shit. They were smoking the entire time. Nobody, of course, said anything to them. But I'm sitting in the middle of this like Bermuda Triangle of them passing <laughs> who knows what. I, I don't, I've, I've never Snoop partaken Dog. in anything that's of the quality of what I'm sure Snoop Dogg uses. And uh, yeah, by the end of that thing, I was like in a fog bank of smoke. And I was just like, I, afterwards, I was so like red-eyed. I went into the the... The green room would just was eating red vines nonstop. <laughs> Got and the tr- munchies hardcore. I tried to do a live stream with the Funhouse guys afterwards, and I just laid on the carpet. Just like <laughs> I was laid flat out. But at this event, uh, you know, we had to make a, our commitment was to make a video for Rooster Teeth, and that's what we were participating in, in the tournament. Um, and Gavin was there, and he had to make a video as well for Rooster Teeth. Um, the guy next to me was a guy named Jesse Wellens who you would know from the prank versus prank, boyfriend versus girlfriend channel. And that's sort of how I knew him, is like this prank versus prank guy. And I was watching him like shooting all this stuff and talking to people and the way he was like filming himself and talking. I was like, what's he, it's like, that seems like it's kind of fun. It seemed like really different than what I associate as being a vlog. And I went back and I watched some of his stuff and I was like, this is awesome. I mean, this is really incredible. And then through him, I discovered other vloggers, you know, people like Casey Neistat, things like that. And it's just like, it just seemed like the medium as a whole had 
was light years beyond what I had remembered it being. Yeah. I mean, when it started back in the day, like vlogging is kind of what set YouTube apart from just being cat videos and stuff, right? It was the moment someone turned the camera on themselves and was just like, I'm just going to talk at you and you are the comments, yeah. you know, like being able to talk and just talk about your day and kind of treat it like a diary. And that kind of blew up. And then there was the whole, uh, what was the, the, the fake story of the girl, lonely girl. Yeah. Lonely, lonely girl. girl like, oh. make a narrative out of it. Yeah. And like it kind of made it. And that was like, Oh shit, we can do a lot more with, with this as like a platform. And then it kind of, that's who's, a, what, who's a big lonely girl fan, by the way, two, two very influential people are like, came like a huge lonely girl fans. John Green, you know John oh, Green. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. He was he, John Green is one of the people. He was like holding on to the fact that it wasn't fake. Like he oh was one of the last God, holdouts. That's awesome. He's like the dude in the wrestling in the folding yeah. chairs going, "It's, it's real, real, real to me." me. Yeah. Uh, and then the other guy, Jeff Ramsey. No, yeah, shit. <laughs> big Lonely Girl fan. He actually yeah, like watched awesome. her show on. The, like the CW or whatever. They oh made some God. island show. Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, but I mean that, that's. Hilarious, but like that hit at that time, and that was must have been what, like 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. YouTube really like came out 2005, and then the vlog started in 2006. And it wasn't until like 2008 that uh, people started making money off of YouTube, like with it being directly monetized um, by YouTube itself. I know a guy who had millions of views before they started the partner program. That's crazy. The Ask a Ninja guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, they had oh, millions yeah. and millions of views. He's the guy that showed me YouTube for the first time. A guy by the name of Kent Nichols. Man. Yeah. That's because there's that whole generation of people that just kind of stopped after the partners started, you know? It's just things like I think shifted more back then. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think PewDiePie is going to get knocked out of the number one spot anytime soon. Sure. But like Fred and people like that, Smosh has been very consistent there as well. Well, Smosh was, as far as I know, the first channel to get partnered. They were they? The that first makes sense. People making money on, oh, really? on YouTube. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, That's so they cool. were doing that. And then, then there was like the, the rise of the Asian American filmmaker. And like vlog comedy thing going on, so it was like Kev Jumba, yeah, and uh, Ryan Higa, yeah, Ryan Higa, yep. and um, uh, like Wong Fu Productions and all of that, and they they were doing that, and then Wong Fu did more like actual shorts and narrative stuff, but Kev Jumba was like that. YouTube was vlog content; it was just a dude in his dorm room making jokes to right. a camera, you know. Well, and I think the cool thing about it too is like it's it's what YouTube gave rise to this format, but also I think it's. It's not a format that traditional media would have made on their own. Like, there, you know, we had TV shows for years and years. There was never just the thing where it was one person talking to you about their live, you know, lives every single day. And it's like it took YouTube to come around and make this genre come out of, come out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of weird that it, you know, reality TV obviously is super, super successful. And that's just because people like seeing people and seeing people they have their relationship like real world right like totally yeah. makes sense why that thing would take off but this even real world the they natural, had, to, they had yeah. to put stuff in exactly like, yeah, yeah. Prompts and but what's interesting here is we're kind of seeing like with the uh, prank versus prank and stuff that is that evolution on youtube where it's no longer just talking to a uh, camera it's there's content being made you know it's like mm -hmm. there was a, a story a narrative being told whether it's the prank that they're doing or the daily vlogs that, that they would do or other people would do about their lives turned into reality TV. Yeah. Where it's like, we have to do something to keep this interesting. We can't just talk about what we're doing every day because if you go to Starbucks every day, that's boring. Yeah. yeah. When I, we were at that event and I said, I said, this is really cool. And I got to talking with Jesse about it. And uh, I said, this is really neat. I said, I think this is the kind of thing I might be interested in giving a shot after all these years. And I'm just like mentioning that. He said, this is only, literally the only piece of advice he gave. He just said, whatever you do, don't do a daily vlog. Like, he had almost like a thousand yard stare when he said, he's like, don't do a daily vlog. Anybody who does a daily vlog, it just takes over their life and it ruins their life. Mm. And he was, he was pretty clear about it. And I, I've heard a lot of vloggers say the same thing. If you try to do it daily, it'll just, it'll consume you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, you know, you start to feel like you're, like you're stuck to that and that becomes your thing. And eventually it's just like, oh fuck, I got to do this vlog again. You know, you can't ever have any time for peace or relaxation. Nobody's interesting every day. Yeah, all right? that's true. It can't possibly be the case. I mean, if you- Kevin's pretty interesting. Yeah, well- not everybody's Kevin. <laughs> yeah, that's for damn sure. Um, Shay Carl, who was one of the founders of Maker, mm -hmm. uh, he recently put out a documentary called Vlogumentary. It was part of the YouTube Red Yeah, that's situation. the second most recent thing he's done. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's been, that's been we out. don't need to talk about the other stuff. <laughs> you know, but it, it, I mean, it's part of the deal, too, is that you, when your life's on display... You know, your life, you, the audience then does have the expectation that they're going to get access to everything. And then yeah. they're surprised when there's something in somebody's life that they don't have access to, yeah. you know, but it's, it's also another one of those things. It's, it's, I always am fascinated by 
scandals, we're off on a tangent here, but I'm fascinated by scandals that get overshadowed by other scandals. Like the Shea Carl thing happened. There was just for, you can look it up, I'm sure, but there was a cam girl who released some texts that they had, which I thought were, you know, there's nothing physical. It didn't seem like going on, yeah. but apparently people were very upset The big by issue that. is when you your entire channel is based off of vlog content that is family friendly, about families and right. about the love that you have for your family. <laughs> like that's when that gets a little a little iffy, especially when you just release a documentary that goes into the dangers of putting yourself on the internet. It unchecked a lot of boxes yeah. in, in one day. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it, when that thing goes on display and the people don't know and they thought they didn't have access to it, then it becomes a bigger deal. But right after that scandal hit, then the PewDiePie anti-Semitic stuff hit yeah. and everyone mm -hmm. completely forgot about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, the, and that happens all the time. To me, the best example of that is David Letterman had this crazy sex scandal where a guy wrote a script and was extorting him for like two million bucks and the FBI got involved and David Letterman handed him a check in, a, in public and then they arrested the guy and everything and it, it was like this huge story. Then Tiger Woods oh, sex scandal oh, happened and perfect nobody timing. cared about the David Letterman thing after that. Man. Yeah, nobody yeah. even thinks about that with David Letterman now. Yeah. You know? I People feel like that's always the thing. Whenever there's like an awful uh, awful news that companies have to break, they always release it like on a weekend. Or when there's something like a big announcement's about to happen and they know that the anticipation is going to blow that story up. So let's, you know, let's sort of sneak in the shitty news. Yeah. So it can just kind of get tossed aside quickly. Friday at 4.45. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, no one's yeah. checking their emails. Yeah. We'll, we'll be fine. Another example is Fine Brothers. Fine Brothers at the exact same time when they had that meltdown mm -hmm. last year. Sony was having the exact same kind of issue where they were trying to trademark Let's Play. Oh, which I, I was yeah. very interested in yeah. because yeah. we have the Let's Play channel on YouTube and they were not saying a word about it. And then at the same time, the Fine Brothers were doing kind of a trademark play with uh, React. Mm -hmm. Everybody went nuts over the Fine Brothers and Sony was just like, skated yeah. along. Well, the gamers were upset. You know, the people that read Kotaku every day were like, yeah. fuck you, Sony. You can't fucking do that. But then like the general public, like the Fine Bros thing got to the general public and that was like just out of hand. Yeah, but do you think that the Fine Brothers are... are I don't know, hit on a broader level than PlayStation does? Uh, well, I think it did in terms of news and in terms oh, like of trademark like, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I got you. It's just like yeah. the Fine Bros that felt like people felt like they were being betrayed as a uh, user base, yeah. which is going to upset people a lot more than the big bad company that they love already, PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a weird dynamic between uh, going back to like the vlogging, where it's like yeah. when you know these people from YouTube, you feel a different type of, type of uh, connection and relationship with them. Yeah, so my plan is to do a vlog a week, go for a year, and then that's the plan. It's just one year of it, and that's all That's all I'm going to do. And now, after a year, I go, I still like this. I'll do another year or something, but that's the plan for right now. So what is the kind of motivation behind the content of the vlog? Because I saw you do one recently that was uh, kind of how Rooster Teeth makes money. Yeah, we wanted to be more transparent about that, you know, because I think that a big part of the YouTube online video phenomenon is that it's also this, like, incredible entrepreneurial education that people are getting. Like they watch, they know how PewDiePie makes money. They know about like branded stuff and everything. When I was watching TV as a kid, I didn't know anything about that. And I think it's really important too for people to realize there's other models besides YouTube ad revenue. There's Patreon, there's everything that you guys do, live events, merchandise. So I just, we wanted to be able to talk about that kind of stuff. And it's yeah. also, I think it's important, you know, as you're asking the audience for support and watching the shows and everything, you kind of want to give them a sense of where that it's all leading, that it's heading somewhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Did you ever watch any vlog content at all? Andy? Not really. Not, not at all. That part of YouTube was kind of in the past for me. Like I was not really on YouTube a whole lot at that time. For me, it was just like AOL instant messenger and that my internet was like downloading blink One Eighty Two videos on Kazaa. Like oh, that, yeah. that, that's what, yeah. and also because I didn't have a uh, good enough internet connection back in the day. Mm. Like I don't think I got high speed internet until like 2007 or something like that. And it was, yeah, it was kind of rough. 56K. Yeah. Oh, God. The dark times. <laughs> yeah. But So there's guys like Casey Neistat now that have kind mm -hmm. of like revolutionized what the vlog was because everyone thinks of it as just, oh, we're just talking to the camera. In and, your bedroom. And, 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 yeah, in yeah. your bedroom. And he's like, no, like we in can hotels. turn this into <laughs> in, in hotels and on the streets on a skateboard yeah. and all that. But it's like that obviously takes so much of his life up uh, doing it daily and all of that. But for you, like when he's quit a couple times, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and he's back now, but it's not daily. And like, is it daily now? I think I he's doing like is. stuff for CNN. It's not really clear to me what's going on. Well, he, his company got bought by 
CNN. CNN. Yep. Yeah. And His company Beam. 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 Yeah. Beam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's one of those things where Phil DeFranco just recently uh, launched a Patreon where he wants to have a next generation news network. I think that's actually what Casey Neistat's already got kind of going on. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of what he does is now more events like around the election and marches and things like that. He tends to go out now and interview people in his style. But I mean, he's like, he's got that down. I mean, yeah. he's like, he, he's a guy I think that revolutionized it because he took something that was exceptionally low production value and added a bunch of high production value elements to it mm -hmm. that weren't necessary, but that like took it to another level. That's yeah. what I identified with. And because of that, he was able to kind of transcend YouTube. And instead of just being seen as a YouTuber, he's seen as uh, what YouTube is capable of. Like, yeah. I feel like the mainstream media even would look at him and like, he's that guy that is at every event, every like big event I've been to, like the Nintendo Switch launch event. There he was, you know, it's like, he's always at those like, he gets invited to everything, whether it's video games or lifestyle or entertainment. Like he's there at the red carpets and covering it. Well, a lot of times too, brands tend to be, you know, older people that manage those brands, uh, and they don't necessarily understand everything that we do. Even mm -hmm. people in video games don't understand really let's play and streaming. They're catching up, but when they see somebody who's like a crossover talent who can communicate things, I think that's just very attractive to them. Mm -hmm. Like I say, it's like I, every time I put out a vlog, it's like I see in the comments, oh, Casey nice that, Casey nice that, you know, or something like that. But it's actually, go check out Jesse Wellens' uh, vlogs. I, he's like, he's, he makes films. You yeah. know, he did a thing from Burning Man where it's a full film and everything like that. It's I, I'm super impressed by it. Yeah, no, he's great. So with your vlogs then, like you're in San Francisco now doing a vlog. Yeah. And that inspired you to do other vlogs. Right, just uh, doing whatever, you know, while I'm in town. You know, I, I annoyed you guys by when we went out to lunch today, walking up and filming you as I walked up. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's, uh, you know, it's just something I really enjoy. It's it's a part of uh, my job at Rooster Teeth or one of the privileges I have being able to go around and do stuff like that. We never really got a chance to cover it. We had RT Life, which is like our reality show, and now it's up to three days a week. But I just felt it was really cool to show, like, all the kind of cool stuff that we get to do because of all the support that everyone provides us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've gotten to meet some really cool people. And I did a, I came out here to California because my friend, uh, she's launching a, uh, like a subscription box, like a loot crate kind of a thing, but it's all for like high end luxury cannabis products. And she had this weird dinner that was thrown for her launch where it was out in the middle of Napa Valley. Wait a minute. When was your launch? Was it 11 days ago as of the recording of this? Probably so. <laughs> was it on 420? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It wasn't on 420. She got married on 420, though. Uh, so I love that. Of course. Dedication so to the yeah. craft. Very dedicated. And, uh, yeah, it was a weird dinner, like a Northern California thing, where it's like out in the middle of nowhere, Napa Valley, and there's incredible views, this beautiful Northern California. And it was a dinner where there was pairings of, instead of wine with the different courses, it was all different types of cannabis. And it was interesting. And, you know, people didn't have to partake. Um, and But it was it was an interesting experience, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. It's slam dunk for a chef. Yeah. You know, by uh -huh. the end of it, everyone's like, He's this the best is, chef in the world. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best food I've ever had. And you knew it was kind of like, it was leaning that direction. Because the first round of appetizers that they bring around on the trays and everything were literally PBJs with the crust cut off. Oh, I that's, love that. that. I love that. <laughs> they know what's up. <laughs> Bringing out like kool aid jammers and shit. <laughs> like, the dessert, by the time we got dessert, it was literally just like a bowl of ice cream with cookies jammed in it. It was, it was nothing. That's you know? awesome. So, so you're at the point now where it's like, there's just cool shit happening. You're like, I'm just going to go vlog that. Yeah. Yeah. Just do cool, fun stuff. And I know... Like, I know some people that are doing really cool stuff, um, you know, and, and there's there's just really interesting things that are going on. An upcoming vlog is um, the Ringling Brothers uh, Circus is coming to an end in Mar in May. What? Yeah, mm -hmm. right? Yep. It's going to be the last ever show of the Ringling Brothers. Holy shit. Yeah, it's just done. They, they eliminated Animal Acts a while ago for, you know, yeah. society, you know. <laughs> How long ago was that? I can't tell you. Like, I don't think it was How long, long did they eliminate the axe? Or how long because did they announce it? I went to a circus for the first time, uh, a Barnum & Bailey circus, like two years ago Yeah, in Austin. Did they have elephants? Mm, maybe not. Yeah. There was like lions and shit. Yeah, the elephants were the first to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. They're the smarter ones. <laughs> that sounded bad the way I said it. <laughs> they, went, they went to the retirement home first. <laughs> yeah, but so now I think because of that, of the elimination of the animal acts, it became less interesting. And yeah. so ticket sales started to wane. So now the Ringling Brothers Circus is going away. And uh, how long was it though? What, what was the... Wasn't it like a hundred and something years? Yeah, it's over a hundred wow. years, yeah. Yeah. But I have a Fucking friend who, intense. she's a YouTuber. She came to the U.S. from Russia 
with the circus, and that's how she came here. So oh, thought, Olga? Yeah, Olga. Oh, cool. So, awesome. yeah, we're going to like go like to the, one of the last Ringling Brothers oh, shows wow. and talk about that because it's super interesting. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's like a piece of American history just going away like yeah. that quickly. It's, I mean, not quickly, but it's still <laughs> it took like a while. It, but... it seems like it was super abrupt, and I feel like it's something that we took for granted for all this time. Mm -hmm. And now it's gone. It's like, oh man, I never went to one. Yeah, yeah. that it was it, it was quite the experience. It's like it's what it's marketed as. Like there's fucking animals just doing crazy shit and people now is that is this stuff? the one with the two? No, that's the, a Vegas show. The two tigers guys. Oh uh, no, yeah, that's uh, Vegas show. I want to say Sebastian Siegfried and Roy. Siegfried and Roy. Siegfried and Roy. That's it. <laughs> Sebastian. One the of crab. them died, right? Nope. One nope. of them got severely hurt by the tiger uh, and like uh, broke he was his okay. heart. Yeah, don't spread fake it news, like, Andy. Oh shit. Bit his neck. And busted a major artery in his neck, oh. so he had a lot of problems as a yeah. result of that. Damn. But he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but he's good. Yeah. I think there was a big push to not kill the tiger, too. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. what always happens huh. when an animal attacks somebody. Oh, man. Yeah, that shit's crazy. I feel kind of gross. Did you see the vlog that I did with uh, Gavin? I thought you were saying with Siegfried. <laughs> no. <laughs> the other dude. <laughs> it's our, it's our Rooster Teeth White Tiger, Gavin, <laughs> Gavin Free. Uh, he's been in the UK, he, from the UK in the US now for five years, and in Texas specifically. And I've always said, look, you can't buy your own first pair of cowboy boots. Somebody else has to buy that for you. Oh, my God. So I finally took Gavin out, and I bought him. That is fantastic. Cowboy boots. Oh, I saw the Instagram video. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Where he's got the Texas shirt on and everything. Oh my yeah, fantastic. That he actually great. makes a fairly decent cowboy. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. Not that he's not good looking it's, enough on his own. It's but. like his waist is like this big, and the shirt was like that fucking wide. Well, <laughs> the only one they had on the rack was an extra large, and he normally wears like a European woman's small. Yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> it wasn't exactly a tailored fit. Oh, man. <laughs> Man, that is ridiculous. So for the vlog, speaking of cool things, you should come to Kind of Funny Live 3 and vlog that. You can get your ticket now, kindoffunny.com slash KFL3. I'm never going to give up a chance to scheme and try to get cool things to happen. So you you nailed, that. nailed that promotion, yeah. by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I do. But yeah, you should come do it. That'd be cool. I don't I'm, dude, free. I had so much fun at Kind of Funny Live 2. Um, I, I'm dying to go to Kind of Funny Hell Live 3. Hell yeah. June 3rd. June 3rd. June 3rd. I can't wait for you to see my entrance. Yeah? Oh, yeah, his was pretty freaking dope. My wow. entrance this year is about to be. What are you doing? Uh, Rafters? Can't say. can't say. Can't say. It's gonna be cool though. You guys gotta slow down. You can't one up yourselves Dude, every year. We're, that's we're just, not we, possible. That's not how we do things though. Like we're like we're the type of people that are like we'll figure it out next year, which is kicking my ass this year, <laughs> trying to figure it out. But I mean, hey man, you just gotta you gotta go for the gold. Yeah. What's the point if you're not gonna do it? As cool as possible. No, go I totally agree. Home. You know? Yeah, go, go bigger. Go bigger. Go, go bigger. Tsunami. Home. Yeah, Johnny Tsunami, Disney yeah. Channel, original movie. Mm -hmm. So, for the, ending out the, the vlog conversation. Yeah. What can people look forward to with your vlog in the future? Oh, I mean, you know, just going and doing cool. I li like to have a mix of things where some of it's about Rooster Teeth. I did what I, that business one that you talked about. I swore when we finished that, I go, this is fucking boring. Mm -hmm. No one's going to care about this. It immediately shot to the top of views of all of the vlogs I've done so far. So I never really quite know exactly what people are looking for. Um, but I know there's a mixture of behind the scenes at Rooster Teeth, cool productions, uh, introducing new people, which I think there's a limited appetite for because people do tend to go to YouTube to see faces that they're familiar with, but then also traveling and going places, which yeah, yeah, we get yeah. to do because of conventions and everything else that we do. And now RTX being in three different parts of the world, you know, that's at least three weekends in the year that I'm going to be going to really cool places. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Before we move on from that topic, what do you do at Rooster Teeth now? Like, what is your <laughs> role? Is it just kind of podcast and big picture stuff and then the vlog? On camera, the big things that I do are the vlog and podcasts. But how we spend most of my day is, and it's a great thing because how well Rooster Teeth has turned out and how big it's gotten. But I spend a lot of my time helping other people make content. Like, just today, I've got like five links I've got to watch for stuff we have coming out. And I'm going to give notes on it and everything else. You know, we make so much content now that a lot of people say I can't watch everything. I have I literally watch everything like three or four times oh because I God. watch different versions of it and everything yeah. else. Almost everything. I don't you know, the gameplay stuff. Those guys know what they're doing, yeah. you know, and it's so like, you're still that hands on where you're oh, screening yeah. the, yep. the content. Wow. Yeah, I'm watching. I'm watching kind of that. And then, you know, at the same time, I'm working on high level business stuff like there's like mm -hmm. business relationships and distribution stuff uh, that they need our help with trying to develop a new thing that we're doing uh, for later this year that's totally outside the the boundaries of what we've done before and then you know I'm working with Ellie back in Austin she flew back uh, from San Francisco and I'm like we're 
you know, trying to stabilize footage for the vlog that yeah. we took from a helicopter. So. Oh my god! Yeah, that so it's a, it's a, you're like, oh, I got a drone. That's pretty cool. Fuck it, let's get a helicopter. Do it the old fashioned way. I didn't think I was gonna be able to fly a drone near the Golden Gate Bridge mm -hmm. because I I think I've tried it before and there was like a no fly. These uh, these drones. They get their GPS coordinates, and there will be no fly zones. Like, you're not flying this thing here, and it won't take off. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And you can't disable the GPS. Not oh. that I've tried. <laughs> but uh, it turns out, I guess I could fly near the Golden Gate Bridge. The footage looked fucking incredible, by the way. Woke up at dawn. Dedicated vlogger. Oh, my God. I was there at sunrise. You ever been out of Golden Gate at sunrise? You've grown up here your whole life. Uh, no, like only, only when you're hungover. <laughs> no. I mean, my thing is, like, growing up in San Francisco, you miss out on a lot of those experiences. It's a weird kind of thing, because... Being from here, you take it all for granted, right? I get it. But there's certain things that I feel like uh, the, me and a lot of my friends stand by that people would think are just like absolutely insane. Like uh, Pier 39 is probably the most touristy place you can go in San Francisco. Without it, I'm one of the most touristy places in the world. But I love it. Yeah. It, there's very few things more SF than that. And there's going to be the the you know the hipster people that are like, the mission, man, that, that's what SF is. And that is what SF is. But I think there's something about hanging out at Pier 39 with your friends, Eating making food. fun of the tourists. Eating like, food. that is part of the experience. And, and watching the sea lions. The sea lions yeah. are there. It's like there's this whole like like culture there that it just feels so SF. Seeing the Golden Gate Bridge, seeing Alcatraz, it's like, that is the type of shit I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm proud to be from here. It's cool that people want to come here to see this shit. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, never been to Alcatraz once in my life. No kidding. Yeah, because it's like, that's not the type of thing you do when you're from here. Mm -hmm. No. You know? It's but, like being a New Yorker and going to the Statue of Liberty every summer. It's just probably not <laughs> something you do. Yeah, and like the, the Golden Gate Bridge uh, was... It, it's, there's not like a walking path to get to it, but it would probably be like a 15 minute walk from my house growing up. Yeah. And so I would take the bus every day to go to school and the, my bus route would literally just go right next to the Golden Gate Bridge. So it was just like that view of the bridge was just like a daily thing where I'm like, oh shit, yeah, that exists. Whenever people come and visit and they see it, they're like, holy shit, I've there never seen something like this in real <laughs> life. And I'm like, I guess, man. <laughs> just a bridge. God just is real. Bridge. God, <laughs> God is real. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of the Game Over Greggy Show. Click here to subscribe. Click here to support us on Patreon. Click here to see other episodes. Click here to go into a portal that'll take you to kind of funny games. I'm Greg. Kind of, I kind of made all this happen. But I mean, not in like a conceited way. I'm just saying if I didn't want to do the Oreo show ever, then it would have never happened. I hope Kevin isn't mad at me. You mad at me, Kevin?